My name is Patrick Way. I've been a photographer for 40 years. I always uh, took pictures wherever I went, even if I wasn't making money at it, uh, involving in other, involved in other entrepreneurial types of projects. But I always maintained taking cameras around with me and photographing just about anything, uh, documenting anything and anywhere I went. I remember in the 60s, uh, my best friend moved to California when I was 15. So that would have been like uh, 1963. And uh, in 1965, I went to California, so I was 17. Started smoking marijuana around that time. When I came back to Kitchener, there was a group of people that may have, you know, within a year, there might have been 30 people that would meet at a particular corner down on King Street to buy some marijuana. And uh, just to give you an idea of how that expanded after, you know, 67, 68, 69, and it was just like right across the globe. Uh, there was a movement, I guess, uh, I'm, th I'm thinking about uh, close to the 80s, there was a few clubs around like the back door which was the Metro Tavern and it was a little club in the in the back that turned into a kind of a club where a lot of the artsy people um, hung out and did events like I did a lot of slide orientated shows against uh, backdrops of uh, bands and jazz bands. So I traveled a fair amount back in the 70s and uh, 80s, down uh, through all the states, Mexico, lived in New York for a little while, uh, Vancouver, uh, LA, I have a friend there that uh, I kept traveling back and forth. I've done all kinds of stuff from studio photography, weddings here and there, uh, industrial photography, some helicopter shooting, uh, manipulated imagery from way back of uh, doing stuff that nobody else was really doing at the time, taking acetate and hand painting it with colored gelatins and acids and things like that that would eat through the emulsion and sandwiching on to other shots. I also developed another uh, type of photography that I still haven't seen much of, the odd one and that's taking pictures into reflections of puddles and then turning them upside down so that you can see the reflection the right way, similar to some of the shots that you'll see. And uh, it adds this whole other dimension because you have a surface of the puddle plus the reflection and they kind of cross each other and do this bizarre thing that some of them kind of hard to understand so it kind of turns it into a surreal type of image. There's no doubt that some of my uh, um, slides from the uh, analog era is uh, they're definitely unique when I um, manipulate them in Photoshop versus if you shot it in digital and you just can't get that. And one way that I can explain it in a sense, and I knew this right from the f day one when I first uh, got Photoshop, if I took one shot and I wanted to lay another shot on top of it, I had to make one less opaque, transparent, and then another transparent. Not the same as when you take a slide that is 100% of what it is and put another 100% on top of it. So you end up with this richness, because you never lost it, you never made one uh, less opaque. So it's got a richness, and when it's sandwiched on top, you end up with this a uniqueness definitely can't do in Photoshop. My first break really was uh, I was living in Mexico and I came back in 1976 I believe and uh, a friend of mine Doug Biggs um, uh, worked for an audio studio and it was a studio that uh, he was kind of ahead of his time friend of mine now, Nick, 
and he uh, started a video company. And so this is back in like 1976. There were no separate video production houses, even in Toronto, I don't think. There was an NFB film that was being produced and we got hired to do the production and I was the stills guy up in Algoma, uh, north of uh, uh, Lake Superior. And uh, that kind of started my career because I had to really perform and uh, uh, make sure that I had the shot. I met Vern a number of years ago through synchronicities of uh, coming up from Mexico and peyote experiences and so on. Won't go into all that, but Vern uh, uh, for the sisterhood would do uh, sweats numerous once a week, I think, for a period of time, and I often went. What a sweat lodge is is uh, well, Vern would probably stay say that it's um it's a prayer lodge. It's a place. It's their church basically, Native American Indians right across North America, mostly in the northern part, uh, had sweat lodge ceremonies. And we went to a lot of the prisons in Ontario, Guelph Prison, Workworth, which is uh, a large prison up near Kingston, and P4W, which is prison for women in Kingston. So as an example, there was a few women that I got to know a bit that had been in there for a long time. And in fact, they uh, liked me because I guess I wasn't a threat to them somehow or whatever. And I got to document it. Uh, one particular woman uh, in there for um, murder, murdering a white man that was raping her. And she gets double the time because she's an Indian and uh, or native. <clears throat> Anyways, um, and her family lived uh, out in uh, uh, Alberta and in all that time that she had been in prison, this is just one example, you know, 20 years or whatever she only had, she never had any uh, visitors because they're all very poor. They can't afford to fly, you know, 2,000 miles and then uh, spend uh, a few nights in a hotel and so on, you know, so she never ever had a visitor. I've always distinguished the bridge between um, uh, uh, my definition of art to some extent is there's very little art, most of it's craft, and a lot of mine is too. I'm not trying to perpetrate that, but there are some that I've done that I would consider maybe a piece of art. And what is art? Well, I don't know exactly, but it's something that kind of moves the inner soul or spirit or heart of a person and somewhat uh, maybe helps to transform that person. Mm -hmm.